Hello, I'm Craig Toblock. I'm the CEO of GoToDags, and today I'm going to show you how you can easily make multicolor icons on your 3D printed parts using font icons. Let's get into this. So, what is this for? Um, oftentimes, you want to print something like this. This is a UHF RFID reader, and it's going to end up printing multicolor, right? So, we have an icon and text on the front text on the back. This is even clear, translucent um, to let the LEDs go through. And text is straightforward, but the icons are a little bit harder, right? So normally you would have to get the SVG and kind of mess around with that, but font icons can make this process a lot easier. So let's first get into what a font icon is, and we will need to actually close this CAD software. Say James. So a font icon is just a font, but instead of the characters, it's the icon that you want. Um, unless you're a web designer um, or a web developer, you might, might not have encountered this, actually. So a very popular one is Font Awesome. There's several of them out there. We use Font Awesome. We pay for it. We like it. Um, but you can use, use whatever you want. And you can see they have... 30,000 icons, tons, tons of them available to you. And um, you just need to find kind of the right one you want. So the first thing you have to do in this process is actually go download it. So here, again, um, in Font Awesome, uh, uh, you're going to want to download the desktop version, right? Again, we pay for it so we can download the Pro. I'm actually not sure what's different between the Pro and the free, um, but I'm sure there's something. Uh, so if you download the desktop version, you get the actual font files. So here's the zip. We expanded it. And while all the SVGs are in here, we're actually more interested in the font files. So these are system font files that you can install. Now for us, we're going to install the, the regular, and I'll cover why in a second. And to install an icon, you just on Windows at least, you just double click it, hit the install button. It's already installed, so we'll just overwrite it, let it do its thing. Now, this is installed on my system like anything else. You can come into your system, go to fonts, search, and go to font awesome. Here it is. You can also remove it from here if you don't want it. Um, so now we need to go back to our CAD software. Um, and the reason that the CAD software has to be closed when you install this, some, some software will not reload fonts. It, like basically when it starts up, it gets all the fonts, and then that's it. Um, and it won't pick up the new one. So let's, we have a little test part that I've been working on here. It's just a little token. We often uh, make uh, NFC enabled tokens, but I'll save that for another video. So this is just a 40 millimeter uh, by 40 millimeter by 2 millimeter uh, token. So the first thing you have to do is actually choose what icon you want. Now, in Font Awesome, they come in different styles, right? They have solid, regular, light, and thin. So let's take a look at the thin. The thin light might look cool for something like a mobile app, but it's not going to 3D print well because it's thin unless you make it very big. But if you're printing something like a 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter token, there's, there's not really enough meat, if you will, in the icon to have it uh, print well. So I would suggest using something like regular. And again, there's you know, a couple thousand icons to choose from. You, know, you can go for the poo icon, the cloud icon. But for us today, we're just going to go old school smiley, right? So you find your icon, you click it, and um, there's a lot of things up here. But up here, you can like click copy glyph. Now, if I do that, what's actually happening is it's copying this character, and this is character code F118, to the clipboard. No different than you would copy on a notepad, but in this case, it's copying this icon. So now, if we come back over to uh, Inventor, and we use Inventor, but I'm sure this uh, process works with uh, any CAD software. We're going to create a sketch on our face, and we're going to add some text. And now that that glyph from that icon is on our clipboard, we just hit paste. Now you can see it just comes across as a dot, and that's because we're using Tahoma font, and Tahoma font doesn't know what that character code is. 
But if we change that to fa awesome regular, there's our little smiley. Now, that's a little small, so let's kind of make that bigger. Um, and we're going to want to center justify it and middle justify it. That'll help us when we're aligning it later. Um, we'll skip that in this video. But now you can see we've added a character to our sketch. It's, it's not an SVG. It's a single character. And it's really easy to change, too. Let's say if we didn't want that smile, if we wanted to use the, the grin one, we can just, again, copy that glyph, come over here, and just edit it and paste it. But in our case, we like the old school smiley, right? So now we're, you know, you might want to straighten this and center line it or whatever, but well, that's not really what this video is about. So we're going to finish that sketch, and now we're going to perform an emboss operation on that sketch. So click that here. We're going to do um, an engraving. And you see, you didn't have to select anything. It, it treated that sketch as, a, as an entire um, kind of whole. Now for us, we use a 0 .0 or 0 0.15 layer height and a 0.2 initial layer height. And I always like to use three layers for this. Um, I feel that that gives enough coverage um, for the multi-filament. So if you do that math, you end up wanting to emboss uh, a half a millimeter. And now we've embossed our surface, or our icon, and it looks like a smiley. Um, and you can see previously in Inventor, I renamed uh, this first solid base, right? And that's going to be important. The next thing we're going to want to do is actually fill this in. Um, so we're going to create a sketch on the bottom of a, that embossed surface. So click there. And then to make your life easier, you can just say project cut edges. And what that's going to do is project all the edges that that selected surface slices through. It's just one click, and you can see we've now gotten everything. We've also gotten out here, but we don't need that right now, so you can ignore it. So we're going to finish that. And now we're going to come in and extrude the specific um, part of the icon that we want. You have to be a little careful here because it's actually easy to mess this up and like that and select the whole um, icon or the whole circle, right? But um, if you're just careful, you come click that one, that one, that one, and that one. And we want to extrude that to the top surface. So we're going from the bottom of the embossing to the top. And here's, here's the little bit of magic, right? Like, if you click this button, you can create a new solid, and then we're going to call that solid text. So it filled it in, but it doesn't really look that interesting. But you can see over here, we've created another solid. Now, what I like to do um, for just kind of visual appeal is change the body appearance to this. Now, this has absolutely no bearing whatsoever on the 3D print. Um, this doesn't control the filament or anything like that. This is really just a UI thing to help you see what's going on. So there, there it is. We've got two solid bodies. Um, we've got the base with a little fillet. We've got the embossed icon, which is really just embossing text, and then an extrusion to fill that uh, embossed back in, but we've created a new body in the process. So save that and we are going to come export this to a CAD format. Um, so always export as a step file. Um, when you're exporting, make sure to have uh, high spline accuracy or else you'll get weird ribbing. Um, do that, save, override our other file, and now we're done in Inventor. So we use uh, the bamboo printers, the X1C and the, the P1S, probably going to end up having to get a couple more here. Um, and we use Orca Slicer. So we already have everything dialed in. Um, we, like again, we use a 0 0.15. We use uh, Polylite PLA Pro. Um, I'm going to skip all this uh, for this video. But I, this all kind of presumes that you have your printer dialed in and know how it works. And you know, you're just learning this other, other part. So grab our uh, STP and drag it on here. And uh, first thing I like to do is uh, choose the base filament. So we want it to be, um, 
white. So you can see that it has numbers up here. You can just select it and click uh, the number three. And that set that whole object as the number three filament. You can see though, I put it on the, the ultimately the wrong face because we want this to print on the, um, the other side. So we want to switch, switch the face. So click lay on face, um, click that service. And now it's on the bottom. If you come over here to objects, you can see there's just, just one here. So since we have the multiple solid bodies, you can click this and say split to parts. You do not want to split to objects. You want to split to parts. And you can see now it is um, created a parent relationship between this parent object that is split to its part. Um, if this was split to objects, if you then moved it around and resized it, they would move independently and that could potentially be a disaster. So always want to split to parts there. So now, if you look at this from below, you can see our smiley, but we want to fill in the, the, the icon areas. So the first one is always the, the base. So we want to leave that as white because we already chose that before. And now we're going to click on the other ones and choose the filament. So I'm just going to press the one. So there's one, 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 one. And there's our smiley. So you can verify what's going on um, by, you know, clicking slice plate as you normally would and coming all the way down to the, the first layer. So first of all, you realize because we emboss by 0.5, for us, that's three, three layers of filament. So one, two, four for the embossing. The other important thing to look at here is what is coming first. So in this case, um, bamboo slicer is doing the, the base first, the white first, and then it's coming back and doing the black. This is what you want. This is going to produce a better quality result. Now, the algorithm that bamboo uses to do this is a little weird, and there's kind of a lot of discussion and bugs on uh, their GitLab that you can, or their GitHub that you can go look at. But sometimes it will actually choose the other one, and I believe it's optimizing around what is going to cause. Um, reduce the chance for a bad print but for us for this kind of multi-filament printing we always want the the outer one to be printed um, so if you look at the go to the prepare tab you can click this customize current plate button and choose the first layer sequence and change that to customize um, i don't really see that this really does a lot and there i think there's bugs around this in this case because we've split to part but in but for us we've gotten lucky and it prints the white first and it all looks pretty good um so now i'm just going to go ahead and uh, send that to the printer and uh i will show you guys the result when we're done so our print is done pull this thing off these plastic scrapers, by the way, are great for getting things off. There we go. There's our little smiley. You can see it's perfect quality. No bleed. And it's easy. So here you go. It's now easy to use font icons to add multicolor icons to your 3D print. Hopefully this helped. And uh, if you're interested, give a, a like and subscribe. We'll do more content about how we use 3D printing. Thank you.